Welcome to Women Tech Charge. I'm your host, Amory Imafadon, and today I am joined by multi award winning self care champion and executive director of Glitch UK, Shay Akiwawa. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, you know, I don't come, I don't go on Twitter anymore, or I don't post much on Instagram because of the fear of abuse. And I'm like, no! I love being out, doing workshops and speaking engagements to talk to young people about reclaiming the online space. And that's what we're all about, championing digital citizenship. Welcome to the podcast. Hey! <laughs> Thank you for coming. Before we get started properly, can you explain to the listeners what Glitch is? So Glitch is my oops baby, founded two and a half years ago after I oops experienced baby. my oops baby because I didn't mean to set this up. Uh, like you know how people are like, I woke up one day and I had and a I dream. Was and <laughs> <laughs> That's what oops baby. Um, but you know people wake up one day and like, I. I woke up and I, you know, I knew I was gonna like make poverty history and I had a vision about setting up comic relief or band-aid or like that didn't happen. It started off I was a elected councillor. So I was the one of the youngest black female councillors representing East London, but but and I was invited to the European Parliament to make a speech. And this was this was the time that we were like globally discussing the Syrian refugee crisis and like Europe's response to this. And so kind of very long story short, some of the French national were there. My existence just in annoys the far right. And I made an impromptu speech um, defending the a Syrian refugee on the panel. That speech was posted online a few months later and then it went viral and then it was posted on a neo-Nazi forum. And I was just like on the receiving end of relentless targeting and harassment. Like it was unbelievable. And law enforcement were trying their best, but it was not good enough. And so I did a campaign. Yeah. And out of anger. And that was fix the glitch. And that was fix the glitch yeah. because I believe that these glitches in the internet is what is stopping the internet and our online platforms from fulfilling its fullest potential. Because I use social media really well. Like, mm, you give, I, I'm, you giving, I'm giving myself no, a pat. I was going to give you the props pat, anyway. Yeah, but yeah, I'm giving myself a pat on the back because yeah. I use it really well, really positively, really engagingly. I like my gift game is strong. Mm -hmm, is. Um, my memes are really good. They and I'm are. really funny. And like, I don't stalk Idris too much, but I had that, <laughs> I, I toe the balance really well. Questionable. Questionable. <laughs> Questionably. I know when that photo of, <laughs> I photoshopped my face <laughs> next to Idris. <laughs> was a bit too much. But I see I, tre I tread the line. <laughs> so I felt like, no, disrespect was real. Like, I just was like, I literally said, and I, can, I feel like I can say this to you because you get it. I'm not a mug. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah, literally yeah, what I said. Yeah, Don't yeah. mug me off. Yeah, yeah. And then I started, started this campaign out of anger. Mm -hmm. I remember when Lucrezia invited me onto ITV to talk about what happened. And who's Lucrezia? She's an ITV London Tonight presenter. Oh, okay. And she invited me on to talk about what happened. And she was like, this is not on. And I was like, it's not on. And so from there, loads of people galvanized around this campaign. And so now Glitch is all about advocacy in the UK, but internationally working with like, the UN and Canada and other governments and quangos if you like um also with business and tech but before the o oops moment like the the moment when like in my whole life changed i was relatively like a normal <laughs> normal young person championing politics a in normal the end. young person who at 22 was elected a councillor but you know what it, or selected as councillor who was at 22 was selected as councillor yeah but you know what I didn't know it was politics I didn't know I was politically charged what did you think you'd signed up for I I people called me Moni uh -huh. People call me out like a complainer. Right. Obviously, it's now that I can see that I was clocking social injustice, mm -hmm. and I, and I d could see that like I was being treated differently as a black woman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only now that you can kind of put you the language exactly. to those experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't understand it was politics. What I do remember very clearly was Charlotte Polius was my friend from school, from Maryland, primary school, secondary school, and I remember seeing her one Friday. Um, lunchtime, it was weird. Like I, like I remember this day like it was yesterday. And she's like, I see you at school on Monday. And it's Sunday morning and I'm like, uh, before you even brush your teeth, everyone's checking MSN to yeah, see I like what's it. the like, what's the news the shape? nudge. What's the nudge? Mm, yeah, yeah, I remember nudge. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a screen there. <laughs> 
MSN, and then you'd like um, go on and off so the person oh, could see the notifications yeah, and everything online. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah yes, I remember yes. good times. So, you know, you sign on MSN to see like what popped off on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. And um, can I remember like everyone's statuses being RIP Charlotte? And I just, I was like, who's Charlotte? Like, he just, I just could not compute that yeah. this was my Charlotte. Charlotte had been stabbed at a house party the night before and she died um, and because Charlotte was so funny people just thought she was gassing she was messing about mm. but she was literally calling for help so she died at this you know at the scene and she was stabbed by another girl and I didn't cry I was in shock that was Sunday I had dance class on a Wednesday and I remember bursting out into tears I think it's because dance was my was my safe space so I think I was I felt safe to cry I didn't cry at school I remember like all lessons were like off we off timetable because they wanted to be around for us because it was the first time that someone in our school community had like died and obviously of knife crime and I just remember from then asking why like why like why Charlotte like why why did that girl pick up a knife like why did she think that she had to like I just kept asking why and it was through the the whys that I discovered it was politics it was people making decisions about my community like my ends and like we were not being represented and that anger again just fueled me to like say look I want to be involved in where the decisions are being made it. yeah I did youth politics for a while okay. so I did UK youth parliament mm -hmm. I ran to be a young mayor mm -hmm. like I did a UK youth council but I was like this is all tokenistic stuff no offense to any young person who's doing it I think it's a really good training ground and really good understanding of how politics it's advocacy works yeah. Yeah. but I was like we are not controlling the budget mm -hmm. <laughs> we are not not controlling where resources are being allocated yep. and it's like where is that happening mm. it was like where the adults were right it was the mm. big table so mm. I was like okay I'm gonna go get some experience which I did I went out to Brussels to go understand what youth rights were like go and understand like what is it that my people in Newham don't have because you don't know what you don't know so I said let me go out to explore see the world to yep. see the world understand. to see like to challenge myself on like why is there a youth minimum wage why is that minimum wage the same for all age groups like it was like a real like in enlightening moment while I was in Brussels I applied to stand for a party as a party candidate okay and uh, I got it I got selected and I campaigned for nine months and it was emotional because I was campaigning knocking on doors that I played like runs out run outs you know run outs uh, when you want knock on a door and you run away yeah. yeah um <laughs> And but this time you stayed there. But this time I stayed there and I was them. asking people to vote for me. And I remember seeing like um, people who I obviously like, they'd see me grow up and stuff. And they were like, I can't believe like, you know, I'm going to be like putting a cross by your name at the ballot box. Like it was an emotional time. My mum was outside at the door, the polling station. And it didn't really hit me what I was doing, but I just knew I had to do it. And then those four years were insane. Um, and my final year on the council was when Corey Jr. was shot in the head in my ward. So it had been in Newham. Newham had loads and loads of shootings and, and stabbings and, and CJ had been shot in the head. And I bawled my eyes out. Like I bawled my eyes out and I was just like, what what are we going to do to make a difference in this area? Like, I just don't understand why somebody who was about to start college, mate, has life has completely like gone and va vanished. And it was simple things that could have been changed and so I left those nine months with a bang I was like I'm doing it for CJ so I didn't I didn't care about being diplomatic I didn't care about you know upsetting you people wanted I wanted to make yeah. a change and yeah. be disruptive and at the same time the glitch thing happened and I was like wow okay it's not really about me now it's about championing and being an advocate for these voices I wonder whether there's something about when you're part of the machine or when you're part of those processes and you're part of those meetings and you're part of, part of, part of, is there elements of there are distractions almost as part of the way that things work that mean that being diplomatic or mean that having other priorities or being seen to be a good counsellor and making sure you're doing everything correctly means that you don't end up at the hard edge of this is what needs to be done. People being shot in the head or people being stabbed. Massively. Yeah. 100%. Like... I'm from Newham, so no one to just lost diplomacy. <laughs> just say how it is. So I think I annoyed a few people. Oh, in those three years, anyway. In the oh, three okay. years, like, <laughs> especially like the first, like the first meeting, I was like, objection. <laughs> well, not objection. That's law. But I was like, I stand. I'm like voting against this thing, and I was like one of very few people who stood against it because yeah, you you do go in so principled, and the machine does eat away at you mm. and actually I still face that dilemma now with glitch mm -hmm. having these pure principles 
But when you're doing advocacy and you're trying to compromise and and like be dip diplomatic, how do you make sure you're not compromising your morals and your standpoints and your views and you're trying to push for the greater change? Particularly when you're, from, you're coming from a place where you don't have power. So I'm a black Nigerian, British woman from a very working class background, but I have no cultural capital. So what do I leverage? Who do I kind of attach myself to and all of that stuff? It's a minefield every single day. It all comes down to me when you're the founder and executive director of an organization. And the biggest thing that I love doing is around our training and ed education. Yep. How we can get more people to be active bystanders online mm. and especially teaching, teaching and educating young people women and girls about their online safety okay. a lot of people come to me and say oh you know I don't come I don't go on Twitter anymore or I don't post much on Instagram because of the fear of abuse and I'm like no don't be silent this silence effect is ruined and that's what we're all about championing digital citizenship time for a break send me a message using the hashtag hashtag women take charge and please subscribe and rate wherever you listen to podcasts What would you describe yourself as technically? Because this is Women Tech Charge. Yeah. You are running a tech non-for-profit. Non yeah. What's your technical, I don't know, credentials is the wrong word, experience? I get such imposter syndrome okay. when I get, when glitch gets like, glitch or I gets like Techness. referred to within the tech sphere. Cause I'm yeah. like, I can't code. <laughs> I know you're not dead yet, right? <laughs> I have tried, I have tried doing two websites, they've made me cry oh and I have to just remind myself like tech is a spectrum like you've just said yeah. and I think I'm definitely about the ethics of tech, okay. the ethics of AI, the ethics of policy mm -hmm. systems, product design, being user centred, yeah. I think that's my thing so I don't know if that's human centred design which which correlates to my ba my background which was facilit which is facilitation right oh, okay. so I do facilitation around political political consultancy mm -hmm. or engagement so what's the <laughs> chronology so there was born in the best place on the earth which is east london mm -hmm. and then you went to school in east london went to school in east london and did you do a levels i did a levels in east london george monarch's college what did you do a levels in oh my gosh i did history law sociology and Please say politics Please say sorry, oh, sorry sorry then i did uh i did social policy with government at lse so that oh, was my okay. first bit Social into with government, right? Uh, under like the applied science, if you like, political science, yes. economic theory, and all of that stuff. Yes, okay, it was hard. Right, <laughs> that was kind of my first in, into it, and it was doing uh, education policy that opened my eyes to seeing STEM, the system. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and seeing how yes, it was. I started blogging on STEM. If you find the blog is very embarrassing oh, okay. i started talking about the importance of women being so in you stem could, you could have you know we could have we could have yeah, we could have partnered on yeah. stem -ets. so i graduated from lsc then did some international work experience in brussels. that was the brussels one yeah okay i was doing i was working for teach first supporting okay. the teachers who had who had uh, who had graduated completed their, their their two years in a very very hard school to get them to still stay active within education policy I and champion in okay. championing the ending of inequality in education right. and then it was going freelance and saying like how can i get how can i use my facilitation skills to get more young people interested in politics and defining their political journey for themselves rather than having to go or follow our party kind of institutions that we have like our policy politics so i was ahead of the game i predicted the the failure of our political parties way 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 before we've seen it happen now and then i was able to get a job doing some stuff around uh, in the commonwealth and we're in the middle east and north africa okay getting young people thinking about politically engaged as well yeah thinking okay. about their communities and be, and these soft skills that they could use to give back and it's been amazing What is the digital equivalent of things you can do to be an active bystander? Let's say top three things. Top three, um, help report it to the platform. Okay. 
uh, reply engaging to the post as originally attended. So if someone's talking about Black Lives Matter, they're not saying that white lives don't matter or Asian lives don't matter. They're just talking about Black lives don't matter. So reply engaging how the post was originally intended. And that's a ratios thing or not Not even? That's that ratios? That's anti-ratios. No, but it could be apply around feminism. If a woman's talking about her experience with, in dating or her experience like walking down the street, she's not now saying all men. But you know how people go into the mentions and say, but it's not all men. It's like, actually, you're di- now derailing and gaslighting the person and making them feel bad about an experience that they've shared. So if you reply engaging with the post that's originally intended, you help shift it back. Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, that's two. That's and two. Then three. And then um, I would say... Oh, you're making me pick three. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be cheeky. I'm gonna go four because oh, one, one the is bonus one. Um, yeah, the third and the bonus. The, go go into their DMs. I mean, don't don't be annoying. The person the who person who's is being under targeted attack. Right, okay. and is under attack. Yeah. Like send them a direct message or send them an encouraging post because you like when you're on the when you're on the receiving end of floods of abuse. Yes. Um, or someone is stalking you or harassing you, it can feel so isolating. And we are seeing huge impacts of psychological, the psychological impact of online harms, right? Yeah. With self-harming, suicide rates through the roof. Uh-huh. Like med- the medical professions have been saying that they've had an increase of like um, cases all linking back to social media. Okay. So if we can send an encouraging message to someone to say like, I've seen you or great lipstick or yeah. ignore that, like ign- not don't ignore the trolls, but um, you know, we're not all trolling you we love you we support mm, you mm. that helps kind of provide a light okay. in what can feel like a very dark and nice. gloomy time yeah and the fourth one the, the bonus, bonus one yep. it's just selfishly <laughs> um we need more data around this so okay. i really try and encourage people where possible to document abuse and we've okay. got a free resource on glitches themselves website. or of other people if you saw me going through something yeah. and you're like how can i help you sis yeah. i'd be like can you please document the abuse because i might miss some things or i might have muted my filters yeah so documenting abuse for yourself, but yeah. also as an active bison for somebody else okay. is really helpful. Then we can take that to police and start capturing more data around online harms and abuse. Yeah. It's been the thing that I've been trying to push the most um, with Glitch to be intersectional. And I'm really glad that we do Like We we back and support trans women, LGBT, mm. um, people of color and black women. Black women are the most likely to receive online abuse, right? What was the stat? It was like Diane was, Abbott received. Diane Abbott, rec- Diane, uh, Diane Abbott received so much abuse that she skewed the data for when they were looking at just labor women okay like she skewed it off the graph yeah. that's how much abuse but it was something gets. like high 90s or whatever oh the, yeah the, yeah yeah. Kind of, yeah and women are th- every 30 seconds a woman is sent an abusive or problematic message on twitter mm. and black women are 84 percent more likely to face harassment online than white women and we don't have any data around this like that's the only data we have, yeah. <laughs> that one, right? And, and I really want to make this point that because I do a lot of international development work and, you know, like you said, I came back from the UN, we're talking about gender equality and, you know, part of gender equality is, uh, gender equality is trying to improve access to the internet and broadband and I'm all for it. But my bugbear, mate, like you can see me now as well, like my bugbear is that we are not getting ahead of that. We've not learned from what's happening in the West yeah. where now it's been so embedded in our culture yeah. and the bad behaviours as well have been based yeah. on our culture. Yeah. We are access, we're we are infect. giving villages and towns access to the internet, giving women mobile phones because we think that's empowering them, but not giving them any education around safety, around like this potentially could make you more targeted, target, mm. right? Like mm. taking to- you're told to take photos of your private parts and mm. sell that. Like mm. there's a huge complexities around it. And I really want to get ahead of the game now. And that's what I personally want to get, want to be into like post glitch or maybe with glitch, if trustees allow me to, is that how we can get ahead at any time someone is given access to the internet, they already have digital citizenship, like, in them mm. anytime someone's thinking about a tech tech thing there's a kind of 10 top 10 tips around digital citizenship that um they can think about you in the innovation like guns kind of you have to pass the test yeah like a digital yeah. citizenship license yeah. i like this creativity can we make anti-bot bots and i wonder whether there's something about almost having glitch bots yeah. and then it allows people to sit there and report stuff or yeah. sit there and document stuff or yeah. sit there and think of something nice to say and it can suggest something nice to say. So this was, there was an event we were part of a couple of years ago where young people made this don't say that bot. So it would search through Twitter and look for people saying really mean things and would reply and say, don't say that. And people would actually either stop or they'd reply and be like, no, I didn't mean it. I'm, yeah, I'm really sorry I said that. Amazing. So I wonder whether there's something about 
you know, can you build a... Can we automate Can you build this? a glitch bot? Can you have a glitch army? Yeah. I think there's something about that citizens brigade slash yeah yeah Mo- mob the, the not the mob like a yeah. squad yeah the so squad or like the what's it neighborhood watch neighborhood, almost yeah i like that so it'd be great to see how it can be automated but we are going to do a respondathon so we're going to do a like a campaign uh, okay. to demonstrate how one how difficult it is to um how how online space has become so toxic. So we want to yeah. want to show how much abuse women are getting. Mm. But we also want to demonstrate how to be an online active bystander. We've called this a respondathon, mm-hmm. um, and we'll be talking about um, this in the spring around mm. a big like a hundred volunteers who'll be responding to hate that high, ten high profile women have received. Mm. But it would be great to see how that could be automated mm. a little bit more. How do we get tech and, and AI and all the other trends in the fourth industrial revolution to be in a similar place where we now have the internet, we ha- now have really good ways of disseminating information to a lot of different people. Maybe not everyone because digital exclusion is real. It's real. But also if they see something where it's like, oh, I wonder whether tech would make this quicker or tech would make this better or make a better experience. It's wishing and I'm kind of wishing and hoping that that's something that we get to quickly. This is digital citizenship. Yeah. That's why I've not called it like tech citizenship or anything. I've tried to make sure that the term that we're using just really shows that anyone can have an opinion, should really have an opinion and can take a stance on their digital rights, privacy, their digital footprint, um, their digital safety and security, but at mm-hmm. the same time understanding their role in creating a positive online experience, a positive digital experience. Because if you do then go on to be a technologist or a, I don't know, an AI professor or whatever, that basic fundamental thinking about digital citizenship rights and responsibilities will be so embedded in you as a value system that we wouldn't keep creating these technologies that are already inherently biased or problematic or have the ills that you've just talked about that's the problem i think i think you've hit the nail on the head there it's the people that have that agency and people that have power and that are creating need to have that embedded in them and and up until now it's been you need to have maths embedded in you this is it that's the sole qualification for being part of it this is it. This is what sense. you do so well. You're so collaborative. You don't hold space. Yeah, you've got an open door policy, particularly to women and black women. And it's amazing. And I think that in itself role models how we should work in this tech space where I've been around people who make me feel. No, wait, I take that back because I believe no one can make you feel anything. Right? Okay. But I've been around people who I have now felt like, oh, my gosh, I need to go away and do a master's at o- OII, the Oxford of Institute whatever it's called (laughs) i need to go and an internet institute yeah yeah, i need to go and (laughs) get a doctorate by my name to be taken seriously and actually no no actually part of it is recognizing that lived experience you know it's my lived experience that has meant that we have taken this term digital citizenship to a whole nother level before people were talking about it in the terms of like digital literacy and knowing how to code and all of that stuff which is amazing and we need that but that kind of ethics point to it that kind of policy accountability of platforms of business of tech of tech of government that was missing and that only comes by some from somebody who isn't in that space but i i want i want the both though yes. so i feel like the digital literacy enables and empowers and brings the digital citizenship to to the truest form or the best form of itself. 100%. So I feel like because people have been made to feel like that, they aren't even participating. So right. the only way to reverse that is to say, fine, I'm going to teach you how to make a website so you know how a website works. <laughs> and then now you can know, oh, okay, everyone, everything's like that on the website. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now can you tell me whether you're okay with the robot making this decision about... You know, whether you were the criminal that was there or not, you know, that kind of thing. I think you're right. And I think it should be our digital right mm. to be taught exactly proficiently exactly like that's exactly right. like digi- the digital it's, space and tech be, and then therefore with rights come responsibilities mm. and it's around this idea of being an online active bystander around reclaiming our online spaces the way we do the offline spaces like i totally believe that and i think that's if anyone's listening to this i would i would encourage you to really think about like how you can help make the online space safer I'm going to end it there. So so what have we learnt? Um, four ways to be an active bystander. We've learnt if you have got the spare time and you can build a bot, build a glitch bot. Thank you very much, Shayi. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> this is Women Tech Charge. Subscribe and rate wherever you get your podcasts.